I've been looking forward to bringing you tonight's scary, written by Reddit user Scarabian. But before we get started, please click the like button and share this video wherever you can. It makes the channel easier to discover and teaches the mean old algorithm that we're making it happen here. And now, it's time. For dandelion clocks. On the afternoon breeze, the dandelion seeds floated as pollen bombs, ready to detonate. The children ran through the short grass, trying to avoid them, but most were unlucky. The seeds' delicate contact causing them to explode with vengeful fury. The field of hungry wildflowers were soon painted with the scattered fragments of the young. Swaying grasses leaned over and drank the immature blood. Seven of the thirty children survived, breathlessly reaching the end of the savage meadow. They rested on the crumbling road that separated the wildflower field from the crop field. A defeated Ford Cortina nestled in a nearby ditch, smothered by pumpkin vines, feeding off its metal shell. One of the girls, Mara, grunted and pointed down the road. Another. Polly shrieked and pointed the other way. The argument was settled when Mara pushed Polly into the crop field. The remaining six laughed and shouted in guttural speak as they watched Polly be dismembered by the patty pan vines. The squashes clamped onto their victim's body to feed. The sun rarely slept in these summer months. Near permanent daylight buoyed the plants with vigor and the frequent rainfall surfeited their thirst. Eons of adaptation and genetic strategy had made the plants resilient, dangerous, and single-minded. Mara opportunistically grabbed a large fleshy part of Polly that hadn't been secured by the greedy patty pans. The children fought over it, gorging on the human shrapnel, blood smearing the road. The other children now looked up to Mara, for now. After feeding, they walked along the road they watched the wind, escorting the myriad sizes of pollen, ranging from the invisible to that of a grapefruit. They sought soil rather than hosts. The children, always dressed in what protective clothing they had stolen or inherited, kept their distance where possible. As the few short hours of night arrived, the children lit a fire. Crackling and aflame, the dry, living branches wriggled, crying out as they slowly burned. The children grunted like swine as they huddled round for warmth. When she awoke that morning, the two boys were missing. 
Mara was about to leave without them when they reappeared, covered in strawberry leeches and squealing in pain. The boys were parsnip white in color, the blood slowly being drained out of them. The four girls left them behind and continued on. They soon reached the end of the road and happened upon a warehouse. All four snorted and bared their rotting, mold green teeth in pleasure. There might be food inside. Entering, the girls were fearful. Inside, the floor was wet and lichen. Mara pushed one of the girls into it, who slipped and landed face down. It consumed her unapologetically. Before the other two could run, they too were pushed into the carnivorous fungus. Mara watched their exquisite demise. She walked back into the sun and removed her clothing. Her skin split, just as ripe seed discards its outer shell. And then she bloomed gloriously as the first and only human flower.